And that is a nice short story put together by um, a bank in celebration of motherhood and as well as World Autism Day. Now, speaking about World Autism Day, we're joined by a medical doctor and she'll be here to talk to us about what exactly autism is about, how we can care for and provide for people living with autism. Her name is Dr. Naya Ndupu. Thank you for joining us. Thank you, Oli. Welcome, Dr. Naya. Thank you. Dr. Naya, do you feel that in Nigeria we pay as much attention to autism as we should? in comparison maybe to other parts of the world? The answer is no. A lot of people are still in denial. You will be amazed that a lot of people still do not know what autism is and what the symptoms of autism is. And it's unfortunate for the children suffering from autism because I find that, that sometimes these children are being maltreated out of ignorance and then because some people just believe it's a spiritual problem, these children are locked up. You never get to see them. Yes, you never get to see children who are autistic these days because someone is hiding them somewhere in the house and because they have challenges having to manage these children. I think the awareness, the help, it's very, very minimal. Until recently, there's, there's been a lot of noise about autism and trying to increase the awareness and make a lot of advocacy for these people. So you're saying, despite all the foundations that we have in Nigeria, that there's still not a noise, enough noise being made. But then, what actually are these symptoms of autism that we could look out for? Okay, um, before I get to the symptoms, I think people need to understand what autism is. Autism, we, these days we, call, we say it's an um, autism spectrum disorder. These are neurodevelopmental problems. When we say neurodevelopmental, we mean that there's a problem with how the brain was formed and the functioning. So these kids are born with this. It's lifelong. It starts in childhood because at the point of formation of the brain, some things may not have functioned as they should. So when these babies are born, over time you do notice some changes. Very classical with autism um, spectrum disorder, you notice that Every time we talk about autism, there are three things we know that are involved. One, the issue of communication problem. Two, social relationships. And then three, behavior. So when it comes to communication, you expect that um, if a child is about, some kids as early as four months, they are blabbing. They want to say something, you know. You expect the child to begin to make efforts to speak. Some Averagely would say five months, you expect to hear that. But for a child who at five months, there is no, no effort to communicate, that might be a pointer. Another thing we notice, the social relationship of that child. As early as for some children, three months, five months, three months, four months, there's something we call um, social smile. When the mommy smiles to the baby, the baby smiles back. There's, there's this... Look, the smile, you know, that comes when you see a baby. Children who are autistic, you don't see that in them. You see, there are things we call developmental milestones. You hit this, you know, a child sits at this stage, a child laughs at this stage and all that. So when it comes to autism, we also look at those things. So we've talked about um, your communication, difficulty for that child to communicate early. Most times, most types of autism um, disorder, you find that there's a problem with early communication. However, there's a type of autism where the child is talking, but when the child gets to at about um, 24, almost three years, the child loses the ability to, to speak. Wow. As if the child just regresses down to ground zero. That's just, there's a rare type that occurs like that. So, but generally, most of them, communication problem, um, the other I talked about, social behavior, and then um, social relationship and then the behavior. Generally, when you see an autistic child, an autistic child might just be obsessed with this, with this bottle here. And they just, they have, a, we call it um, a repertoire of behavior, the exhibit. That may be a pointer. So if you do not, if you miss these things when this child is this early, you may notice as the child gets older. So a lot of time we see that parents because they are not informed, they do not know what these milestones are. So um, the risks of not knowing what the issue, not picking them up early, they miss that. But as the child gets older, usually school age, 
at about um, 36 months, that's about three years, when children begin to go out, they begin to interact with others, then you begin to notice. Okay. A typical autistic child, you may come in and the child is not running to hug you. Seems detached, okay. can't be bothered. You know that there's a, a child who, doesn't, who hasn't seen his mom or his dad runs to you when you return, but you may not see that. All right, we'll child. still continue the conversation about autism, but we're opening the phone lines. So you can be a part of this conversation, questions, comments, contributions. Dr. Naya, how do you determine if a child is autistic now? These symptoms are not all conclusive, right? No, they are so, not. <clears throat> excuse me, a child can be a withdrawn child. A child could be you know, maybe a very quiet, calm child that's always recluse. So how, at, at what point? Is there any medical test or is there something that An will be done to determine if a child is autistic? An assessment. If a parent suspects the child or over time had noticed a change or a different pattern of behavior, there's a need to seek professional help early. It's not the reason why we give this information is not for parents to go around and start making the diagnosis. No, you need to seek help. You could see a pediatrician, you could see a neuropsychiatrist, you could see any of those people in the mental health field, and they're able to holistically look at this child and say, this maybe what is going on. And when we say autism spectrum, they could be, it's like a range. They could be very severe ones. They could be some children that just show mild symptoms. So there's a whole range from what looks mild to what may look moderate to what may look severe. So in very severe cases, you have them with all this communication problem, behavioral issues, social relationship, and some form of intellectual deficits for these children. It may happen. So it's going to seek help. Seek an assessment. That's the first thing you should be talking about. If you just feel your child is not reacting as you would expect. And we know these things, but in Nigeria, we choose to be in denial. We know these things because we have neighbors who have children. You've had more than one child. So you probably figure out that um, there's something amiss with this child's development. So you may need to have an assessment. I think another thing that really, really um, inhibits us from speaking a lot about this would be our religious and our cultural beliefs. And how we just, as much as there's a role of faith in a lot of things, mm -hmm. we also understand the role of medicine as well. Let's look at lifestyle habits that predispose one to um, having children or, you know, little ones that are born or living with autism. There are times when we know that mothers feel guilt. When something goes wrong with the child, you give birth to your child and something is wrong, the mother starts to feel guilty like it's her fault. Maybe she didn't eat right, she mm -hmm. didn't do something well enough. Is there anything a mother can do that can predispose a child to being born with autism? Unfortunately, no. Studies have shown the true cause, the etiological factor for autism is not known. There have been speculations here and there, but all these have been discounted. There have been cases where people came out to say it had to do with immunizations, but we now know it's a no. There is no relationship with the immunizations we give to children and autism. That's a misconception. And we have trashed that to one side, that, um, that immunization has no business with autism. You know, so there is really no way mothers can prevent. However, if we know that the most striking um, suspicion is if there's a history of autism. Take, for instance, there's a relative who has autism, or there's a child in that family who already has autism, the likelihood of another child, the, the, the percentage increases. So for us, once there's that history, then there may be a need to begin to talk to the mother that having a history of this in the family already could increase the chances of another case of autism. So that means it's a, it's a, it's a case of it being genetic? Very true. Likely like dyslexia, but I'm not saying it's the same because I know that is also... It is, yes. Okay. There is a strong tie with hereditary. You, you, you are the risk. If there's a family history, then the risk of inheriting it or developing it is high. Okay, so now I think one issue... I remember meeting somebody who actually has a child that is autistic. Okay. And her greatest fear was she felt that he wasn't going to end up like his other siblings, you know, go to school, get a professional course done, become something good, you know, no matter what he wanted to study. So she just felt he was just going to be there mm -hmm. and grow old and be a liability to her. Now, is that true that once a person is autistic, it's just that they're going to be that way forever? Or 
they can actually just live normal lives and, you know, do everything a normal person would do. They can. I have seen people who are, I've had seen clients who are older, who, are, who, are had who have autism, and they're able to function like every other person. You know, I said there's a spectrum. You have where there's there are mild symptoms, and then there are cases where a bit extreme. You know, when we say intellectual deficit, is what the, prop, the layman may call some form of mental retardation these days. That's what we mean by intellectual deficit. So you still have those who are extremely intelligent, good in maths, amazing in music. So if parents suspect that a child is autistic, it's important that that child is assessed. When we assess early and this diagnosis is confirmed based on the history, the examination of this child, then we begin to, you know, it, it requires a multidisciplinary approach where we drag in every other person. You need the occupational therapist, you need the speech therapist, depending on what we find to be the issues in this particular individual. Every time there is autism, there are what we call comorbid conditions. Comorbid conditions could be a seizure disorder. It could be hyperactivity disorder. It always comes, usually comes along with other childhood conditions. So when we say multidisciplinary, we need every other person to be there to help in managing this child. Why do you need an occupational therapist? An occupational therapist looks at the strength of this child. We are able to identify in what we, so it's not that notion of this child is a death sentence, nothing good can come out of this child. That is not correct, unless they have not done what they should do. If this child has been helped up to the point where professionals can assess, we look for what the strength of this child is and see, okay, we can work on this strength and help this child towards this field. This child may not be a typical child who is able to relate with everyone as we expect. However, the, the, the strengths that have been identified on this child could work and you'd be amazed what can come out of it. Now, is this something that can be detected whilst the child is in the womb or... Do, you know, the, the fact that we know that there's, there's a little bit of, there's technology that allows you to check your baby's genotype in the womb. I don't know if that applies for autism as well. No, as of today, there's nothing. Yes, we know for other, um, for some developmental issues, Down syndrome and the rest, there are ways we can detect early during pregnancy that this may be. But as we speak today, no, we, in this part of no, we, we haven't gotten to that where we're able to establish that. We can do a prenatal diagnosis of autism. I'm also glad I mentioned Down syndrome. Now, there's a bit of confusion a lot of the time with regards to the difference between autism, Down syndrome, cerebral palsy. So we find that you know some people do not understand how how different these different these issues are. So would you be able to shed some light on that for us? Okay, what's the difference um, from autism? Let, okay, let me talk about cerebral palsy briefly. In cerebral palsy, what happens when a child is born? You expect that that child cries the first minute of life, the, five, the first five minutes of life. Reasons being that as the child is out of the mother, the child needs to take in oxygen, the lungs expand, blood goes to the brain and all that. And that's why it's so important a child cries at birth. And then sometimes you see when someone is in labor, we are trying to resuscitate, we are trying to make sure this child gives that first cry. At that first cry, you take in oxygen. It's like you just take it and you stimulate everything going on. For some children, for some reason, things may have gone wrong. An infection in pregnancy. So many things go wrong in pregnancy. The, the, labor, the labor is prolonged. The child is distressed at the time he's you know, making his um, entry into the world. The child may not be able to cry at birth. Efforts to get this child, time is going. One minute, two minutes, three minutes, four minutes, five minutes is going, we are losing time every time. So some children may not even cry. You, tell, you hear 30 minutes later, this child cried. Oh, he didn't even cry at birth. A child that was so distressed during pregnancy and um, during the delivery. So because of that, this failure of um, oxygen to get in, those first few minutes of life. So for children like that, they go on most times to develop cerebral palsy. And then you notice at three months, my child can't hold his neck. Why is he not like his brothers? Why is he not like her sisters? you find out that there's a delay in the developmental milestone. My child is not sitting as when they should sit. Mm. For conditions like that, as psychiatrists, when we are seeing, we know that whatever we are seeing today had happened during the period of pregnancy up to the delivery. 
All yes. right, so hold that thought. We'll come back to have that conversation. We have a call from Daniel calling from Lagos. Hello, Daniel. Thank you for calling. Hello. Unfortunately, we do not have Daniel. So you, you just explained... You know, cerebral palsy, cerebral what palsy. happens in cerebral yeah. palsy. And over time, you find that these children, because um, that has happened, there's um, muscular problems, unable to work. Mm. From the point where you say you notice there's lack of neck control as this child is developing, and you notice other features, he's not developing as he should. Can't, unlike um, in Down syndrome, what happens in Down syndrome? Down syndrome, there's one major significant factor, the age of the mother. If I am, um, um, we say, at 40 years, your risk of a Down syndrome, having a child with Down syndrome increases. In Down syndrome, there's a chromosomal abnormality. I've said different things. Down syndrome is chromosomal, unlike where you know um, issues went wrong in delivery and you don't get enough oxygen. But when the woman is older, we know that some things go wrong with the chromosome. So when this baby is being formed, there's a defect. But the good part about Down syndrome is we know that when you're tending towards your late 30s, early 40s, we begin to screen for Down syndrome. Mm. There, are, there are blood tests you do. We um, do um, ultra scans. Ultra scans may actually reveal that this child may have Down syndrome. All so right, it Ma. can be prevented. Please hold your thoughts. Let's take this call from Folori Show here in Lagos. Welcome. Hello. Okay, so yeah, um, unfortunately we've lost that. I might not be able to take any more calls as we'll be wrapping up this conversation. So you're saying it's a chromosomal issue. Yes, for Down um, syndrome. For Down syndrome and cerebral palsy is Distress during labor can lead to that yes, as well. Yes, anything that causes, um, that deprives the brain of oxygen, the first few minutes of life. All right. Mm. Of Finally, life. Dr. Naya, what would you say to parents, you know, to the government? What can we do differently for people living with autism? Um, because I'm a caregiver, I would like to come from the point of um, the burden of care. It's a lot for the parents. Imagine having one child who has several other conditions. This child has, um, maybe has seizure, have, um, has hyperactivity disorder. And these parents are left all by themselves to care for these children. The pay out of pocket is a whole lot. And knowing that this is lifelong, we're not surprised that when parents are told your child has autism, it's like a death sentence. Like, you know, mm. I can understand where the, who, the person who told you that was coming from. It's like all hope is lost in a country like this. In advanced country, there is support for this family. But in this country, there is nothing. You pay out of your pockets. There's a lot. Beyond the psychological stress, this family, they will have to go, go, you know, live with in helping this child. And then I need people to also understand that it's, not, it's really not a death sentence. You need, um, you need to know what we're dealing with. Then you can seek help. Then you can help this child in the long term. All right, mm. thank you so much, Dr. Thank Naya. How can people so follow much. you on social media? Yes, if you need to follow me on social media, I'm Naya Ndupu on Instagram and Dr. Naya Ndupu on Twitter. To enjoy more of this, our Ugonke videos when you just watch, press this button to subscribe on top of our YouTube page. You go love her.